Welcome to this Sofix video tutorial. In this video, we look at very fast transmission line pulsing measurements as an effective tool for estimating the CDM robustness of an IC. CDM events are an important threat for today's advanced ICs. As such, we often get the question, what is the CDM robustness of your ESD protection circuit? However, it is impossible to define the CDM robustness voltage level of an ESD protection circuit. There are several reasons for this. First, CDM is a test standard for packaged ICs and not for ESD protection clamps measured separately. Second, the CDM current is a function of the IC's capacitance to ground. The package type and size thus have a major influence on it. Third, there are several paths through which the CDM discharge current can flow to the discharge pin. As such, CDM failure might occur, uh, occur in core parts of the IC while the ESD protection circuit survives unaffected. Fortunately, it is widely accepted that the CDM relevant response of uh, ESD protection devices can be characterized using the VFTLP measurement method. VFTLP is similar to TLP except with higher currents, faster rise time and shorter pulse durations. Now, even though VFTLP can be used to characterize CDM performance of uh, an IC, uh, these are fundamentally different tests. Whereas the CDM is a single pin test with multiple current parts and is package independent, the VFTLP is a two pin test with a well-defined current path and it is independent of the IC packaging, meaning it's a wafer level test. In order to build up a VFTLP IV curve, the measurement system uh, typically averages the waveforms at the end of the pulses. However, the instantaneous voltage and current waveforms provide more details about the actual transient response if we look at the start of the pulse waveforms. Now, every ESD clamp circuit has a certain turn on time. During turn on time, the ESD clamp switches from a high impedance state to a low impedance state. For fast transients like CDM, it is important to select ESD solutions with a short turn on time as this will limit the voltage overshoot. Plotting the VFTLP overshoot IV curve is a fast and easy way to monitor the triggering speed of an ESD circuit when subjected to CDM stress. Sofix specializes in developing various types of on-chip ESD protection solutions based on SCRs. SCRs have a reputation for being rather slow devices, which cannot react to very fast CDM ESD pulses. Using VFTLP overshoot IV curves, we can further examine the triggering behavior of SCR-based clamps under CDM stress. In the example shown here, we look at two SCR-based ESD protection devices realized in 22 nanometer FDSOI technology. If we only look at the VFTLP data, and these are the solid curves here, we conclude that both clamps can withstand CDM of more than four amperes. However, by looking at the VFTLP overshoot data, these are the dotted curves, we quickly realize that one of the clamps, in this case, the blue one, is a lot better than the other. The green curve shows a large voltage overshoot indicating that it has a slower triggering speed. This means that this SCR clamp is unsuitable for protection of the IC under CDM stress. At Sofix, we routinely use VFTLP overshoot data to verify that our SCR-based ESD protection clamps behave appropriately under CDM stress. Thank you for uh, following this video and please stay tuned for the next ones in the series.